I just want to make a quick remark about something called eigenspaces. So in all the examples we've seen so far, let's go back and have a look at them. There's been a common feature. So here was the last example, this really ugly three by three one we did. All of the eigenspaces had an X in them, right? This variable X. In other words, the solution of the system of simultaneous equations had a free variable X. Going back up, that was also true um, for this two by two example, two, one, one, one. We had an X and then we had this minus one plus or minus root five over two X. Again, there's a free parameter X here. So this is always true. And this is, that's for a reason. Um, so if V is an eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda. Sometimes we just say it's a lambda eigenvector. Then so is um, B, no, let me not call it B, what letter should I use that I haven't really been using very much in this module? Um, K, maybe. So is KV for any K in C. Remember we're work with complex eigenvectors. Um, so why is that? Well, if we do A times KV, we can just take the factor of K out the front and we get K times AV. Well, AV is lambda V, so we get K times lambda V. And now we can take the K back inside again. So this is lambda times KV. So if V is an eigenvector, then so is any rescaling of it. And that's what we're seeing in these examples. Right here, if you if you took, uh, I don't know, let's, let's take this eigenspace here, this um, X minus X, X. Those are all rescalings of the vector one, one, uh, sorry, one minus one, one, for example. Right, so if you take this vector and rescale it, this is an eigenvector, so is any rescaling of it. So rather than writing your general solution, what people often do is they just write down a single eigenvector that spans that eigendirection or eigenline. Um, so you can sometimes just, uh, you can get away with writing the eigenvector for eigenvalue lambda is 1 minus 1, 1, for example. And what people will understand if you say that is the eigenvectors for eigenvalue lambda are the rescalings of this guy. Okay, so you can't always get away with this. So um, let me just give you an example. Let's suppose we have the matrix 1, 1, as in 1, 0, 0, 1, the identity matrix. What are the eigenvalues of this? Well, identity minus lambda times the identity, its determinant is uh, it's just 1 minus lambda to the n, in this case 1 minus lambda squared. So lambda equals 1 is the only eigenvalue. What are the eigenvectors? Well, identity times v equals lambda times v, so equals 1 times v. This is true for any v. So actually, the general solution, or the general eigenvector with eigenvalue 1, is x, y. It has two free parameters, not just one. So this is an eigenplane, not just an eigenline. There's a whole plane of solutions. Any vector in the plane is a, an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. And more generally, we have the theorem that the set of eigenvectors with eigenvalue lambda for a given matrix A 
uh, for a subspace of CN. And now I want to say this is a complex subspace, which means, so in sub, when we talked about subspaces, we talked about real rescalings, right? We were allowed to rescale things by a real number. Now we're allowed to rescale things by a complex number. Um, so proof. Well, we've already seen above that uh, if V is um, in the set of eigenvectors, I should give it a name. Let's call it the set um, capital V. So if V is in V, this is the set of all uh, vectors, uh, all eigenvectors with eigenvalue lambda. Maybe I should call it V subscript lambda. That's what a lot of people do. Then we've already seen KV is also in V lambda for any complex number K. So it satisfies the rescaling axiom of subspaces. Um, if V1 and V2 are in V lambda, then, well, we need to show that their sum is in V lambda. Well, if we do AV1 plus V2, that's AV1 plus AV2. That's lambda V1 plus lambda V2. And that's lambda V1 plus V2. So their sum is an eigenvector. So that shows you the set of eigenvectors for a fixed eigenvalue is a subspace. So in the, all the examples we saw earlier on, this subspace was one dimensional, it was just a line. In this example with the identity matrix, it's a plane, but you can actually get any kind of subspace this way. So this is the remarkable thing about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. A matrix A picks out a set of numbers, which are the eigenvalues, and that's at most n numbers if you have an n by n matrix because of the roots of a polynomial of degree n, the characteristic polynomial. And it picks out for you a collection of subspaces, maybe a set of lines, right? It could be that your eigenlines are uh, like this in, in R3. This is in, in R3. Or it could be that you have a plane of eigenvectors for some eigenvalue and then a, a line of eigenvectors for another eigenvalue. Um, let's make that a bit straighter. So it somehow decomposes your space into, into directions which are specified by the matrix. So yeah, it shouldn't be a surprise that V lambda here is called an eigenspace. That'll be an eigenline if it's one dimensional, or eigenplane if it's two dimensional, for example. So let's go right back to this Arnold cat map example that we did last time. Here, two, one, one, one. We figured out its eigenvectors. They were x minus one plus or minus root five over two x. So that's two lines in the plane. Okay, so here are our coordinate axes in the plane. Um, if we plus, if we pick the plus sign here, we get a line of slope. Um, what's it going to be? Well, if y this is this is saying y equals minus one plus root five over two. I claim that if you calculate what this is, it's zero point six one eight something. This is like um, related to the golden ratio. So this is a line, one of these eigenlines is a line of slope 0.1, uh, 0.618. So that's um, something like 
this not to scale but you know and the other one is the line y equals minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 which is going to be minus 1.618 blah 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 um, so that's steeper but points uh, slopes the other way like this so these two guys are the eigen lines I've tried to draw them intersecting at right angles because they do if you take um, the vectors pointing along these eigen lines like uh, 1 minus 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 and you dot them together what you're going to get is 1 uh, minus a quarter of 1 plus root 5 times or uh, minus 1 plus root 5 which is 1 minus a quarter of 5 minus 1 so this is 0 actually this is always true if you have a matrix which is symmetric in this way about the, about the diagonal so that it equals its transpose the eigen lines that you get are always going to be orthogonal so the these are the eigen lines and they're orthogonal in this case this one corresponds to uh, lambda equals uh, 3 minus plus root 5 over 2 and this one corresponds to lambda equals 3 minus root 5 over 2 okay so that's all I wanted to say about eigenspaces um, in the next video we're going to see some applications of eigenvectors and eigenvalues to systems of differential equations uh, some applications to ellipses and ellipsoids in two and three dimensions and some fun facts about Fibonacci numbers.